Hello folks. Well, this is the Hyperfly, the original Hyperfly that I invented for Kyosho. They manufactured it for over 10 years. I designed this for the airplane pilots that didn't want to learn to hover because we didn't have gyros back then and this is a forward flight machine, no tail rotor. And uh, when it landed, uh, this would shut off and of course that would shut the power off. Now you've all seen me fly it and I'm going to show you something else. Stay right there. The Hyperfly Apache. Now I was really uh, amazed to actually be able to find this. Uh, they're really rare. We came out with the body style about two years after uh, the original Hyperfly was uh, went into manufacture and it looks a lot more like a real helicopter. So we're going to give it a flight today. So let's see how it goes. Two of my originals were destroyed in the fire, but before that fire happened, I donated a brand new kit and a fully assembled one to the AMA National Model Museum in Muncie, Indiana, where they are on display today. Well, my original prototype that went to Aki Suzuki of Kyosho via Chun Park of High Tech Radios looked a lot different from what Kyosho manufactured almost a year later. But it was tough and did what we wanted it to do. Here is Adam Henning flying it at our last club meeting. He said he's not very fond of helicopters, but I had him fly it just to see if he could and he did great, as you're seeing here. <laughs> well, about a year and a half later, after the first version, we designed a couple of bodies for it, the Manta and the Apache. Well, I loved them both, and I made many videos of them flying, even with only one rotor blade, to show the efficiency in forward flight. I'd been interested in finding another Apache for a long time, and luckily found one for sale on eBay recently, so I purchased it. Well, the ad said it looked like it was never flown, but when I got it, <laughs> that was not the case, as you can see from these pictures. There were two high-tech standard servos in it, and one of them had the connector ripped out of it, so I had to fix that. The gear and blades weren't damaged, as they usually didn't, because the whisker switch shut it down on landings and always saved it from damage. Also, the wiring harness is burned up. Well, somehow that should never have happened, because there was a fuse included with the kits. The BEC was just a simple 5 volt Zener diode and nothing complicated. Zener diodes limit the current so this one would run the receiver off the battery perfectly on 5 volts. Well first I had to repair the fuselage where the mechanics and motor mount as they were also broken. This advertises it looks like it's never been flown. Uh, the gear looks alright but as you can see the motor mounts here are broken apart. I cut small pieces of electric glue sticks and made the perfect fix. The body and other parts were also repaired and assembled. The receiver I decided to use was an orange light which works great and is light. But putting an electronic speed control in also made them easy to fly and land as torque also goes away when the motor slows. The motor is a 380 sized brushed so I had to somehow find a speed control that would work and wound up with a Turnigy 30 amp. The original battery was a NICAT 8.4 volt 1100 milliamp and really quite heavy. Well, the batteries I've used since and in this one are 7.4 LiPos and they work way better than the NICADs, that's for sure, and a lot longer. We didn't even have nickel metal hydride batteries back then, let alone the lightweight LiPos of today. So with it all together now, let's take it out and see how it flies. Plug in the battery.
Oh, it's good. I got to get a little trim here. Let's take it around again. Here we go. Apache.